Today on Zero to Awesome, we're working on our off-road camper again, and we're gonna make our bumper slightly more ridiculous. Imagine this, but kind of more like that. So we do still have some more work to do on the interior of Saratera, but we're gonna be working on the bumper today because I think this is one, if not the last thing we have to do before we can raptor line the whole thing. And speaking of that, we're gonna need your help, I think. So we'll talk about our plans for painting or raptor lining this thing towards the end. Uh, but today we're gonna be making a bull bar. And so it's, it's gonna be a true bull bar with some horns. So what is a bull bar? Well, this is a bull bar right here. So it's a bar that goes on your bumper and then I guess it's called a bull bar because it pushes things like a bull does. I don't know. But this is the basic shape we're gonna be making, kind of angled like that. It'll come out a little bit too, just like this one. And we're gonna be making it out of, oh, this has been sitting under here forever. This pipe right here. So this is schedule 40 pipe. And typically you'd use a pipe bender to bend it. And Alan has one of those, but Alan's not here today. So we're gonna be cutting our pipe instead and welding it back together and I think that'll look okay because our bumper is already kind of angly, so it'll, it'll kind of fit right in. So first step, I need to cut some pipe. We'll start playing with some angles and some sizes and see exactly how we want it to sit on the bumper here. But I'm basically thinking something from here, up and out, over, and then back down. So let's get started cutting some stuff. Okay, so the first stage of Operation Bull Bar is a success. We have a, I'd say pretty straight bull bar there. I think it came out pretty good. So next up is, I'd say probably the more challenging part just cause I have no idea what I'm doing. So we are going to take the horns and mount them kind of like you would see, you know, on an old Texas Cadillac, like right on the front there. But before we mount them, we need to, you know, polish them up and then figure out a way to mount them. So I. I've done a little bit of research on how to polish these up. The consensus seems to be sandpaper. Some people use power tools, some people don't. Here at Zero to Awesome, of course we're gonna use power tools. So I'm gonna start sanding these up, starting from a rough grit, going to a really light grit, like 2000. Uh, and then you polish them just like you would, I don't know, fine furniture, cause they are, they will be fine by the time we're done. And then to mount them, these are actually, sometimes they just fall off. These ones are on here pretty good. So I think I'm, what I'm gonna do is just leave them attached throw some glue in there so they don't come off, chop this guy's top off, and then we'll use the actual bone to mount to the bull bar somehow. Still need to figure that part out. So let's get to shining. Look, it's brains. Okay, so the horns are all sanded up now. They came out really nice. Underneath the brown exterior was this really nice black and white color. Uh, we still need to do some polishing on them, but more on that in a second. 
So if you notice, the horns are no longer attached to the cow's head. Uh, so that was an event. One side came off really easy. The other side did not want to come off. So I wound up having to boil it to get them off. Am I doing this right? This is how you cook one of these? Oh my and so the reason the horns aren't attached anymore is because I'm gonna be wrapping the middle of them in some leather. And whenever I tried to wrap the leather around here just to see what it would look like, it came out really lumpy, didn't look good at all. So I went to the store, got the biggest dowel they had, and the plan is to mount the horns onto the dowel. We'll wrap the dowel and the horns in the leather so it looks good, and then mount it over on Cerater somehow. Uh, but first we have to polish these things. So typically to polish them, you'd use something like linseed oil or baby oil and polish them on up, but that's for indoor applications. Since these will be outdoor on Cerraterra, I think I'm gonna try polishing them just like you would a car. So I'm gonna use some automotive polish and then some wax to protect them. And we'll see if that works or not. So let's get started on cow horn wax experimentation.
Okay, so the horns are on. A couple of things here. You probably saw me abandon the wooden dowel pretty quickly. It just, it wasn't big enough. It wasn't gonna look good. Even once I wrapped it in leather, the leather probably would sag in the middle. It wasn't gonna look right. So this right here is a piece of firewood from a tree I cut down in my backyard. And once I got that in there, I really liked the way the wood looked with the horns. So I abandoned the leather altogether, threw some gloss urethane on there, and this is what we have now. This right here, this is twine. Uh, it's actually left over from our first Thanksgiving special whenever we used the Forerunner and a winch to fry. Actually, I can't even remember what it was. There was so much stuff in there. We will celebrate this Thanksgiving with a jalapeno popper wrapped in a chicken fried steak, wrapped in a chicken, wrapped in a duck, wrapped in a turkey. And if you haven't thrown up yet, each layer will be lovingly and handcrafted, wrapped in bacon, and then dumped in a few gallons of Mama Lou's Finest for some deep frying. Okay, so that's what it was. The horns here, they are bolted on. There are two bolts here. And to kind of hide the fact that there's bolts, I added these, uh, these are called carpet nails. Actually, no, upholstery nails. So those kind of class it up too. The bull bar, I uh, ground it down a little bit, hit it with primer. And so now Sarah Terra is ready to paint or raptor line, which is where we need your help. So this is tintable raptor liner and you can tint it to any specified color. So you pull uh, the company that makes this, they make a few different colors that are standard, but if you go to a paint shop, they can mix you up really any color in the world that you want. So we need y'all's help deciding what color Sarah Terra should be and what design she should have on her. So I'm gonna go through a few designs here and if you like them, let us know in the comments. I'll give them numbers so you can just vote for your number. But let's get into that. This first one we'll call number one. This is just some green on the Xterra. The black would be black Raptor liner. The green would be green Raptor liner. Threw some stripes on there, nothing fancy. This next one, this one's actually kind of my favorite. I'm not sure it's Alan's favorite, but I call this one Z2A team. Uh, this will be number two, but it's kind of a tribute to the A team. I thought it was kind of a cool idea. Number three. So this one, I think may be mine and Alan's favorite right now. It's just, again, a lot of black, uh, then some orange, you know, accents, stripe, whatever, put a zero to awesome logo on there. This next one here, uh, number four. So this is the inverse of the last one. I thought that a really colorful Xterra driving down the road would you know, grab a lot of intention. And that's probably right. The thing is, whenever we're done with Sarah Terra, we're probably either selling her or trading her to someone who will you know, appreciate her and use her. And I'm not sure anyone's really gonna want an orange Xterra, but then again, we're already slapping our logo all over this thing. Maybe it doesn't matter at this point. Next one here, number five. This is the same thing again, but yellow. For a little while there, I really liked the yellow. I'm not so sure I like it anymore. I'm kind of thinking the black is the way to go, but y'all let us know what you think. Number six here, Alan banged out on his phone. This is an orange and black theme again. We'd write Sarah Terra somehow in an awesome font. And I think we do, everyone we've done here, we have the wheels with a one spoke, a different color. I think we like that and we're gonna do that. And this last one, I actually think this one might be my favorite out of all of them. So we'll call this the one number seven, and this is supposed to be just like the Bel Air. Alan did this one up. I think it's pretty cool, but again, I'm not sure anybody who gets Sierra Terra after us is really gonna want something like this. So those are our ideas, but we also wanna know what y'all's ideas are. So I'm gonna put up a unmolested picture of Sierra Terra on the screen right here. And if anybody out there wants to Photoshop something and send it our way, if we wind up choosing your design, we'll send you a Zero to Awesome t-shirt, probably some stickers and koozies too. Or if you send us a submission that inspires us in some way to the final design we use on Sarah Terra, we'll send you a t-shirt and some other stuff too. So hit that print screen button, do some Photoshopping, send it to us, z2a video at gmail.com. Or if you want a higher res picture of Sarah Terra, send us an email, we'll send you the picture. We'd love y'all's help. Don't forget about those like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, I know whenever other channels have leftover car parts, they tend to ask their viewers if they want them. And today we've got some leftover cow parts. So if, if anybody, no, no, no one's gonna want these. See you later. So it's the morning after I sanded down the horns and there's all this dust all over the Xterra. And I'm pretty sure that's bone dust.
And then if you look up there at the Corvette, you can see it's all kind of hazy. Um, I'm pretty sure that's bone dust. And it smells really bad in here, like kind of like burnt hair or something like that. This is gross. This is so gross.